Well guys, here we are back at Deep South Homestead with yet another attachment ready to go on the Cub Farm All Planter. As you know, we've been planting our crops and I've been having to fertilize by hand. Uh, I'm getting too old to hold a heavy bucket in this hand to tote fertilize with. It's bad on my neck and shoulders because I've got a messed up disc in my neck. So now we have this fertilized distributor that's made to go along beside the plants and put the fertilizer down beside them. Now I want to take a little bit of time and show you. I had no videos that I found that actually shows anything in detail. Now they show a lot of people show them on tractors or show just picking everything up and putting it on there, but there was no details done about this. And I want to take a little bit of time and do a little bit of a detailed video about this setup. Now when I got the tractor, this came with it, if y'all remember the original videos, this was an old galvanized one. It had a holes rusting in it so big I could put my hand through the sides of it and I almost threw it away. But after looking at the price of one of them, I told myself, I said, you know what? I'd be better off just to try to rebuild that thing. So I actually took some sheet metal and I went in and replaced some pieces in it with sheet metal and put some JB Weld over the outside of it, ground it all off smooth. I replaced the ring around the bottom of it here with a new galvanized steel ring around it. And one thing I'd done was I went back with all stainless steel bolts in everything in this fertilized distributor down on the inside of it in here. Now I wanna give you a little bit of a demonstration. See, I found nothing online that showed me how any of this stuff in here worked. It took me a while to figure it all out. This lever on the outside out here that determines how much fertilize you put out, you move it up or down. This closes it completely off right here. There's a little rod up under in here that operates a little flow gate in here. Down inside here, down inside right here, there's a little trap door right here. When I move this lever on the outside, it lifts that door up and lets fertilize. As this thing here turns in here, it drags fertilize out and drops it down through a hole underneath this distributor. And once it does that, it comes into this rubber tube right here that I have purchased, a new one. And this rubber tube goes down and goes down into this foot. This is a special made, brand new foot that this thing goes down inside that when fertilized falls through here, it comes out of a little groove right there where my hand is. This opens up a furrow and the fertilized falls in there. Now this, it can be adjusted to however deep you wanna put your fertilized in the ground. And the beauty of this is there's no fertilized under your seed. So when your roots on your seed start to grow, they don't grow down into fertilized and get burnt up. This is off to the side whatever distance it is you want to set it at and however deep under it you want to put it. Now that's the first thing. And one of the things I want to mention is a lot of the parts I have here, I actually found what was called new old stock parts. In other words, they're brand new. They were in a warehouse and a company bought a warehouse out and they were still new in the box, but just very old. These chains were one of them. Uh, as you can see on the chains here, the paper is still stuck to the sides of the chain here. Now this chain comes in a 10 foot roll. You have to make them whatever length you want them. They've been in the box so long that the, uh, the paint that was on the chains has actually stuck to the paper. And there's paper all on this chain right here. Now, one of the things I could not find online was chain configurations uh i ha i just basically all i done was just looked at pictures to try to figure out how all this stuff went back together when i got all this stuff here it was in pretty rough condition i had to bent rebend a lot of it because it was bent up but guys you have to take whatever you get whenever you're purchasing this kinds of stuff uh now most of the sprockets were new because you can see here this sprocket was originally set to the outside. If I had the planter base that goes with it here, I don't have the, the planter base. This is a fertilized distributor. When I get the planter base, 
there will be a gear on the outside of it. I will have to take this chain and I will have to, I will hang this one up because I'll have to buy another roll of that chain. I'll have to make a chain that will go from here to there and then one that will go from there to here. And then I will move this sprocket back out to here where it originally was to use with a planter. Now, I want to show underneath the tractor, this is the chain configuration underneath the tractor here. Right here, it goes over the gear on the rear end and it comes up and over a sprocket here. Now I've put in some new washers and stuff in here, taking up slacks. I've spaced this stuff out and I'm gonna replace these. Uh, I bought some at Tractor Supply that's underneath these that are the small ones. And I'm gonna go back and get some more of them to get rid of these big ones and just put the smaller ones on here. This takes up a lot of the slack in these teeth right here and makes it run very smooth as a matter of fact. But the chain, I'm trying to block the sun here. That chain, that's the configuration of that chain. It runs up, it almost touches the brake pedal up here, and then it comes up and it goes around that gear right there. Right here is a clutch system that is used on this thing. You don't have to worry about if you put this thing in reverse or anything like that, it's, in, it's engaged. You don't have to worry about tearing up anything or turning anything backwards or anything like that. The teeth are made on this thing here where it snaps over itself. Now right now I have it adjusted with the plow up. It opens this up so that while I'm driving this chain can turn and it's not turning this chain right here. This chain right here will turn freely right now as I turn it. It can still turn and you see this clutch system turning without the back wheel turning. That disengages it. It's a disengagement clutch there. And that is all taken care of with this rod right here that you put on here. This rod right here has to be a, adjusted with your lift arm up here so that it opens it up to the right amount and closes it at the right amount. And when it comes time, when you get through using this, one thing I like about this is that most people neglect, they get through using it, they just leave it sitting on the tractor. This thing has a J-bolt right here. You can come up here and undo this J-bolt this thing picks up off of here and you can take it and you can go wash it out. Now I've completely rebuilt every bit of this under here. This was completely rusted out, had holes all in it. It's all cast iron. I went in and completely rebuilt it. I went in and rebuilt all this right here. I rebuilt this whole system here. This is brand new. I found this new. Uh, I put washers in it. I shimmed up everything so that this gear and the gear under the uh, distributor here matches up perfectly like a ring gear and pinion under a car. And I put new alamites in everything. Uh, everything's been greased. It works, I mean, literally perfect. And then when you get through, this thing, if you look right here, it sits inside a little harness, just like that right there. And then this just flips over. The J-bolt goes right there, and then you just tighten this thing back down. It's all locked down in place. Now, one thing I'm going to tell you to be aware of, uh, I discovered online, the reason I went through all the trouble of rebuilding this, one thing, the original one is almost $500. <laughs> Secondly, they make a fiberglass aftermarket one. Lots of people I looked at online said to be wary if you buy that one that's an aftermarket one because where there's two little ears at right here, I me mean, I'll show you. This was a big issue with the aftermarkets. Those two little ears right here on the aftermarket ones would not fit over those two ears. And a lot of people said you'd have to grind these off right here in order to make the new aftermarket ones work. Well, I didn't want to do any manipulating of anything. I wanted mine to be as original as possible. So I opted to go ahead and rebuild the galvanized one and uh, not do any grinding and taking parts loose or anything like that. Because I just didn't want to have to have any of my stuff in that shape. Now, I don't have a lid for it. They make a lid that goes over the top of it, but that lid's over $100, and I 
I'm not going to be fertilizing in the rain anyway. And this is going to stay underneath the shed. And plus, when I get through with using it, I will take it and wash it and turn it upside down anyhow. So all the water drains out of it and everything. One other thing I have uh, that I don't have for this is uh, with this particular setup here, you need a number 172 or a 174 planter system that goes underneath the bottom of it down in here. Uh, this wing will come off of it right here. And you have another rod that goes in here on each side that that planter system attaches to. Plus, I put in this new rod up under the front here. I got that. And you have a middle splitter or a plow opener, a bull tongue, whatever you want to call it, that goes on to here that opens the row up ahead of it that I don't have, uh, I don't have that part either. But you want to be very careful. One thing I learned, there's an adjustment right here that if that is not adjusted properly, when you lift this up, this bar right here will hit your gear and break it. So you have to be, you have to be very careful that that adjustment doesn't let this get too close right here when you got this on here. Uh, just those are just things I happened to see while I was working with it, um, and I thought that I would bring that to people's attention because there's so many things that nobody talks about on these videos, and these things are all universal. This gear right here is made so that when this gear right here is running out here, this one will slide all the way over here and work. So it's all made pretty much universal, um, guys. All I need now is just to get the planter system to go on it, and I can actually plant and fertilize at the same time, but that will have to come another day because this right here was a pretty big setback, and it was very difficult to rebuild and to get it right where it would actually work right. So that's one thing that we've had to contend with here and so I'm going to have to wait on the planter system. But right now, I can at least fertilize anything that I have planted. Now, I probably won't use it the rest of this year because gardening season's over for us. But what I will be doing is next year when we plant corn and uh, peas and things like that, I will have it all set up, all ready to go so that we can get out there and we can garden and we can enjoy it and make it, uh, make it a lot easier on us as we get older. Now I do have other things for the cub that I'll be showing in the future. It's just I try to show one thing at a time so that um, we can do a entire video on just that one thing. So be looking in the future for some more things guys. And um, as always, thank you for watching us here at Deep South Homestead. I know these cub videos don't get a lot of views, but there's lots of people out there that like vintage equipment like me. And, and I wanted to try to do an in-depth, thorough talk about this particular product and show how it goes on the tractor, show how it works and stuff like that. So that others who don't know anything about it like me can find it and they can literally see how all the mechanisms work together. So thank you guys from Deep South Homestead.